Welcome to our review on bulk properties of materials. So what we're now going to do is just have a look at a couple of key properties across these different types of materials that we've seen and be able to explain how the actual structure and nature of their bonding has caused these different properties. So the first property we're going to look at is whether these materials are going to be brittle or malleable. So brittle means that if you hit it, it's likely to snap, whereas malleable, they're able to be bent. So the key thing that's going to decide whether a substance is brittle or malleable is going to depend upon how easily those particles within the substance can change their positions in the lattice. So if we consider what happens in metals, first of all, those metal ions are being held in their lattice by metallic bonds, which is that attraction between the delocalized elect electrons and the positive metal ions. If we apply a large enough force to our metal, the metal ions are going to slide over each other. Now, because those delocalized electrons are free to move, then no bonds are actually being broken. So metals are malleable. If we consider the giant covalent structures, then if we apply a large enough force, then many covalent bonds will break at the same time. And that means the substance is going to break, making it brittle. If we consider our ionic compounds, then we will find the same situation, just that the ionic bonds are going to break simultaneously. So both our giant covalent structures and our ionic compounds are likely to be brittle, just because when we apply enough force, many of the bright bond type will break simultaneously, and that means the structure will break apart. Finally, if we consider our simple molecules and our polymers. So if we're in the solid state with these molecules arranged in a lattice, then there's a really good chance they're going to be brittle. If, however, they're not arranged in a lattice, they may be flexible. So in the case of our simple molecules and our polymers, it does depend on how they're arranged. If they're lattices, brittle is likely to be the outcome. If they're not in a lattice, they're more likely to be malleable. The second property we're going to consider is their ability to conduct electricity. Now, a substance can conduct electricity if it's got charged particles that are free to move. So if we consider metals, first of all, then metals are able to conduct either in the solid or liquid state. And that's down to the fact they've got delocalized electrons within their structure, which are free to move. If we consider ionic compounds, then they contain these charged ions. Now, when those ionic compounds are either molten or dissolved, they will conduct electricity because the ions are free to move. However, if they're in the solid state, the ions are held in their fixed positions, therefore it cannot conduct electricity. Finally, if we think about our simple molecules, our polymers and our giant covalent structures, none of those will conduct electricity because they just have no delocalized electrons. Hopefully at the end of this video summary, you do know the key reasons behind whether materials are going to be brittle or malleable and the key reasons behind why they will be able to conduct electricity or not and be able to explain that in terms of delocalized electrons and bonding.